Oh, welcome to Yamaha Music London and welcome Jamie Collar. Hi, Sarah. Hello. How are you? Very good, thank you. And welcome back to Centre Point, The Return, Part 2. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, you yeah. did it a couple of years ago. Good vibes all around, I hear. Always. And I think it's, it's a, ma a, a major part to do with the people that obviously you know the people Centre Point yeah. well. Um, they're great people and they create that vibe. I just have to kind of slot in and kind of make noise and yeah. it's easy for me and um, it's a pleasure to be a part of it. No, uh, Sense Point, it's a great charity, we, we both love it. Mm. Uh, tell us why for you uh, it, you've been bitten by the bug of Sense Point. I mean, it's not an actual bug, I want to make that clear. I think, you know, when, when you're a musician, you get approached by a lot of charities. Mm. Um, and for me, the mark of a great charity is always uh, around the people that put it together and the people that spearhead it. And they're very inspiring, the people yeah. from Centre Point. I also think homelessness has become, it's almost, it's, it's become less, uh, people are less interested in it than, yes. they, than they were. And it's still as, as vital to um, uh, look at the problems of it and it's still as prevalent as it ever was. Um, it's, to be fair, it's a difficult charity sometimes mm. because it's not poorly little children. Absolutely, and yeah. it's not we're not curing something. Yeah, say so we're curing homelessness among the sure. young people. But it's these young people whose lives are off track mm. for no, through no fault of their own. We just want to yeah. get them back on track. That's so exactly, it. and yet at the same time, it's. It, there are parts of it that are quite easy to like immediately yeah. remedy. So I guess it's the it's the long term stuff that is, is harder. But uh, I think it's charities like that that, that I, I really like to be involved. In, so. Well, we're we're super chuffed that you are, Jamie. Thank you. My pleasure. At this time of year as well, always a little more poignant as we approach Christmas. If people are apart from their families mm. and you know need the support of Sense of Point, absolutely. It's, it's, so it's great that you do this tonight. Talking of Christmas, are you excited about Christmas? You've got two small children. Do they yeah. know that? Are they aware of Santa's work yet? Yes, they, they, they are <laughs> aware of his, his good work for yes. children around the world. Good. And I think that is obviously, I think it kind of regenerates Christmas in your brain, yeah. doesn't it? As opposed to like, oh my God, Christmas is coming. Where's everyone going to go? What are we going to do? Yeah. Now it's like, it's definitely, it's, it's going to be big. It's yeah. going to be big, yeah. Big time. Yeah. We've had some questions in from your super fans. Yeah. The first one comes from uh, Carolina Castagno. Yeah. Castagno. Not my Hi, mom. Carolina. Okay, got Hi. it. Um, what are the funny? Yeah, your mum might be in here. There's yeah. one that's something about you changing the world or something. Okay. I thought yeah, that's, that's, that's probably her. Yeah. Carolina says, uh, "What are the funniest things you've ever been given by your fans?" Well, the, I mean, the, the the list really is not something I could say on camera. No, of course. Um, Would we need a? Do I, I didn't bring my bleeper machine? No. For the a great. I, I don't think a bleeper. A bleeper would. A bleeper wouldn't cover it. You'd have to kind of like kind of cover up my face as well. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try and go with the more kind of savoury things. I got this pretty amazing like paper mache sculpture of me playing the piano. Wow! How big was, was it? Well. It was it was pretty big. Some would say to scale, but it was it was big, uh, and it was it was it was like disturbingly lifelike. Like and and, and we, we put it in in the tour bus, and uh, a couple of people wandered down from the upstairs lounge to the, to the downstairs bit in the middle of the night after having a few whiskeys, and they started talking to it, thinking it was me. And weirdly, apparently, it answered. So it clearly has like kind of psychic properties as well. A bit of voodoo going on. Yeah. That so that, that was pretty pretty funny, and it's now I in my studio. I wasn't expecting that. It's I wasn't expecting studio. a papier mache. You. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, um, what's been your most um, memorable moment from the Momentum tour? So you've just finished the Momentum tour, you loved it. This is from mm. Michelle Rogers. Thank you, Michelle. Um, there was, there, I've got to say, this is the best tour I've ever done. Yes. So it's really hard to pick out one moment. I've, I know I've obviously been touring like this for like 13, 14 years. Um, but this was the best. The most people, the most they enjoyed it, the most I got to kind of really just do exactly what I wanted and they followed and it, it was great I think singing along to one of my songs called All at Sea in Madrid with, with the, the level and passion and tunefulness um, where I just didn't have to sing was like I felt like I guess that's what Robbie Williams feels like every night, right? Yes. I it's, had, it, it's the dream, isn't it? People I guess so. Back at you. I never, dre I never, I never dreamt about it in quite that way, but it just, it really, it actually, made, it made me, made me kind of well up, like for real, and I couldn't hide it. I thought, oh my god, they can't see me crying. I was like, oh, okay, I'm really emotional. <laughs> Let it but go. that happened in so many, like you know, 
Portugal, Spain, Germany, France, and, and the UK as well. They were, their audiences were amazing. So it's, it's hard to pinpoint one moment. But why was it so special? Do you think it was the closest you, you've been to you? Do you know what I mean? I know that yeah. sounds a bit corny, but I, I do you mean, just think you felt completely like this is me? It could I'm a be bit that. older now. This is what my music's about. Yeah, I'm kidding people. It could it could be that, and I think obviously I think the older you get, I, I think you enjoy things more. But I think the other thing is that. I've been doing it now for a while and a lot of the same people have been coming to see me and I now feel as though we're all in it for the long I think oh he's been here this long so he's probably going to be here a bit longer and it was it was really reflected in the audience this time what we've done there we've answered Raquel's question as well because she said why was it why was it so special um, and so there you go as well Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking she's very good yeah, yeah. Um, now if you were a piano teacher this is from Linda Fu how would you inspire your students I think that in order to really want to play, you've got to see someone play that you want to be like. You've got to, I think sometimes when people go to see their, their piano teacher, they don't want to be anything like their piano teacher and they don't want to play what they can play. Because it can normally be quite a middle-aged lady in a, in a yeah. long pencil skirt and I, I don't, I don't chunky jewellery. That's, that was my I, experience. I don't want to my, that's my piano teacher, not all piano teachers. <laughs> So what would you do? Would you be like, woo, and up on the piano? No, I just I think you've got to, you've got to inspire them by playing. You've got they've got to find a way in through their own love of music. Okay. I think if you turn up to a piano lesson and you're kind of immediately forced something to play that you have no relationship to, yeah. there's time to get into all that other stuff which you can learn loads from. You can develop a love for. But you've got to, even if it's the East Enders theme tune, you've got to, if that's your way in, then if that's the way you fall in love with the piano, you'll have it for life. Okay, it's beautiful. Great note to end on. Uh, Playing live tonight then. Great note to note to note, Megan. (laughs) Playing live tonight at Yamaha Music in London, the lovely Jamie Cullum, new album, Momentum. Is it out now? Yeah, Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, it's out now. But they don't need to know that. They'll already know it because they'll be super fans (laughs) and they all love you. Jamie, thanks very much. Enjoy tonight. Thank you.